Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everybody gathered here today. Welcome to the Sakaya Prescribing Nature Series, Transforming Your Life with Food. I'm Isa Liton, and I'm all hoping, I'm hoping that you're all having a beautiful Wednesday morning today and are looking forward to learning more about how the right food can help shape our health in today's lively panel discussion. Yes, we guarantee you that. But first, I'm sure you're all aware that in the past few years, there's been this growing interest in being healthier as people become more aware about the effects of highly processed foods and sugary products, the effects these have in our bodies. So this led many of us to go back to basics, back to nature in terms of what we eat. So we're turning more to vegetables, fruits, and even plant-based food supplements, and definitely more being conscious when it comes to nourishing our bodies. So this conversation is even more relevant today as the entire world continues to fight COVID-19. But simply going back to nature might not be enough. We still need science-based evidence to help make the most out of the power of plants. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what Sakaya, a Filipino plant-based brand produced by Unilab's natural products company, Sinovate Pharma Corp, hopes to add to the conversation with its Prescribing Nature series that aims to help Filipinos come up with informed choices about the products that they consume. So aside from our urban and active professionals who are going to share their personal stories and experiences today, we also are going to be joined by two medical experts who will help us understand how smart food choices impact our overall health. And as early as now, I would like to encourage all of you, our dear attendees, please send in your questions. Any that you may have during the course of the discussion, send them via, via the Q&A box. It's right there at the bottom of your screens. And please address your question to a specific speaker and we will get to them later, okay? So making this event, our morning gathering, even more special, Sakaya will also be introducing to us its new line of curated plant-based superfoods. Sounds very, very exciting. And I personally am looking forward to finding out more. So why don't we take this chance to learn more about Sakaya and its newest product line, Sakaya Raw Actives. To tell us more about it, please welcome Sakaya Marketing Head, Ms. Bernice Gonzalez. Good morning, Bernice. <laughs> Hi. Okay, before we actually get to meet Miss Bernice, how about we actually uh, introduce our first uh, panel lineup uh, for today because you saw them already in the po poster. So yes, to our, panel, to our panelists, we are gonna be joined this, afternoon, this morning by our first medical expert who is a board certified in internal medicine, a professionally trained chef and an urban organic farmer he hosted the popular What's Cooking with Chef MD series and co-hosted Health Corner on Lifetime Television for nearly five years. He is the first physician to teach a course in culinary medicine in a U.S. medical school and also the first physician to teach a class in nature therapy at a major university in the United States, particularly at Harvard in 2020. A two-time New York Times best-selling author and co-founder of Chef MD and Plant with a Doc. Please welcome Dr. John LaPuma. Hi, Dr. John. Let's say hello. In fact, he's actually tuning in to our gathering this morning from his very own organic avocado uh, farm, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, hi, John. Do, do, do hi, Yosef, how are you? I'm good. Uh, we'll be joining you in a bit. We'll see you in a bit during the panel discussion and looking forward to hearing what you have to share. Our next looking forward to it. Thank you. Our next medical expert is an internal medicine doctor, health optimization medicine practitioner, one of the pioneering doctors for functional medicine in the Philippines. As a general internist, he was drawn to functional medicine as a new approach that views health as a continuum rather than a cycle, helping people manage their general health and well being rather than solely treating their disease based on symptoms. He's been trained in functional medicine by the Institute of Functional Medicine in the USA and also 
European double board certified in nutritional medicine and anti-aging medicine. Welcome to our virtual panel discussion, Dr. Oyi Balburias. So Oyi, you're on mute, sorry. Hi, Doc. Quick hello. Good Thank morning. You. Hi, Isar. Good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. I hope you learned a lot uh, for this um, talk today. Oh, Thank yeah. We're going to look forward to what you have to share. Thank you, Doc Oyi. We'll see you in a bit. So Dr. Lapuma and Doc Oyi are going to be joined by four urban and active professionals who will share their real-life experiences to inspire and encourage us to please jumpstart and push on with our personal health journeys, okay? So joining us again, not just with our two medical experts, here are our four urban and lifestyle personalities. First is the founder of One Life, a chain of boutique pilates and physical therapy studios mm -hmm. in Manila, the first of its kind. She's a multi-certified pilates, yoga, and movement professional. She strongly believes in two advocacies. One is self-care and the other, woman empowerment. She's also a full-time wife, currently discovering the joys of homemaking. Please welcome Tanya Maria Aguila. Hi guys, good morning. I'm very excited to be here. Yes, looking forward to hearing from you as well, Tanya. Next, yep. we have a National Geographic Explorer who received two grants from the National Geographic Expeditions Council. He founded the environmental organization, the Cordillera Conservation Trust that he's built into one of the leading conservation organizations dealing with mountain ecosystems and indigenous cultures in the Philippines. He's also an accomplished ultra runner and mm -hmm. mountain biker, and as ultra as ultra can get. Please welcome JP Alipio. Hi, JP. Hi, Isa. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi. I'm looking forward again to having a very, very great conversation with all four, but there are two to go. Thank you again, JP. Our next panelist is a group publisher of nollisolly.ph, preen.ph, and Scout. She recently this, this developed a cooking series for nollisolly.ph IG on food. And it's all about easy, comforting, and accessible food called Comfort Kitchen. Give it up for Bella Desma. Hi, good morning, Isa. Good morning, everyone. Okay, thanks, Bea. Looking forward to seeing you or hearing from you in a bit. And finally, he is a functional and integrative medicine practitioner and the founder of Health Nest. His personal health challenges led him to functional medicine. He strongly believes that community is medicine. And this was also the start of his healing journey. To complete our panelists for today, please welcome Doc Bok. Hi, Doc Bok David. Hi, good morning, Isa, and to all. Thank you for having me here. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, these are our panelists for today. But before we get into the meat of our gathering, how about we first find out more about Sakaya by please watching this. Hyperurbanization is here. More than half of the population now live in cities. It has broken our link to nature that is integral to us, putting our bodies in a state of deficiency. Experts call it nature deficit disorder, a growing health concern among people living in the city. In response, people tend to consume any natural product to make up for this deficiency, unaware that it might even be harmful to them. Sakaya. The brand that restores your link to nature. Sakaya harnesses the healing benefits of nature. Validated by the exacting standards of science. In merging the best of nature and science, Sakaya creates the ideal solutions that bring nature back into our lives. Prescribing nature. Sakaya. Woohoo! 
Ooh, we're going to find out more about that after the panel discussion. But for now, may I have all of our panelists in front center of screen as we begin our panel discussion. Again, please don't forget any questions you may have during the course of our panel discussion. Do send them to us via the question and answer box. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. That's the Q&A button. Thank you very much. So to kick off our panel discussion, I want to begin with Doc Oyi. Doc Oyi. Nice to see you and uh, see you again. Of course, I was with you in a previous Sekaya gathering, and it's always a wealth of information when I get to hear from you. So let's learn about how food can have a huge implication in improving our health. Not just that it's good for, good for our health, but that it improves our health. So using food as medicine, how long has this practice actually been in place? And how is it being used now, using food as medicine? Doc Oi? Yeah. Uh, hi, Isa. Uh, nice to see you again also. Well, food as medicine, <laughs> it's been around. Like, uh, it's been attributed to the, the Greek philosopher um, uh, Hippocrates way back 400 BC uh, that when he said that, that food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. No? So uh, it's been around. And even in the Bible, we know how uh, Daniel uh, was able to... Uh, have that uh, intelligence and wisdom when he insisted to just eat uh, plant-based foods, right? So wow. it's around. I mean, Bible times, yes, ancient yes, no. Greek. Okay, long, long time ago. It's nothing new, no. It's nothing uh, that we're just learning this. It's been there, and um, our body, as I mentioned, is not just pieces of organs. These are our body are is made up of um, energy and information field, and it's functioning as a system. And as a system, it requires a lot of substrates. So, and most of these substrates, like micronutrients, macronutrients, we get that from food. You know? So, uh, of course, we're talking here about uh, whole, real, and unprocessed foods. You know? So, foods that are really nutrient dense, foods that contain vitamins, minerals, uh, phytonutrients. So, that's what we're talking here. We're not talking here about foods that are really. Uh, uh, laden with uh, additives, preservatives, or damaged foods. No? So uh, it's been around. I mean, our body, as I mentioned, is a system. It requires all of these substrates in order to nourish us, you know, in order for, for it to function. So it's been around. But sadly, our modern nutrition um, is not able to provide all these substrates. That's why we are getting sicker and sicker. So Ooh. I'm glad to know that everyone now is learning about the power of food. Food, Isa, is medicine. Food is energy. Food is information to our genes. And definitely food is how we also communicate to one another. None. I love how you, that's basically how we're jumping things off. I love how you put that straight out there. Food is medicine, energy. It's really the source of everything for us to live well, right? So I think it's also valuable to understand and now break down further the kind of role food plays, not just how Doc Oyi did it, but in our personal, physical, and mental health. So let's start with that, a concern everyone has during these COVID times. How do different nutrients and bioactives in food support the body's functions in terms of, let's start up here, mental health, Doc Oyi? Uh, well, our, our brain, uh, just like any other part of our body, requires several substrates. It requires energy. It requires um, circulation or blood flow. It requires nutrients. It requires growth factors like hormones. No? Or it requires uh, a micronutrient like the sun, no? like mm -hmm. vitamin D. So those are the ones that how our brain functions. Of course, our brain functions because of the balance of uh, neurotransmitters. So it functions with its so many functions like uh, mental, emotional, cognitive, memory. All of those substrates are needed for our brain to function. So for you to have the total health, uh, the, to the, the total health, uh, physical, mental, emotional, psychological part of it, and even the spiritual part of our health, we need the, total, um, the totality of health. You know? And we get all of those substrates Either we get it from nature or we get it from uh, whole foods that contains all of those nutrients and substrates that our body as a system needs. So if you want the, the totality of health and wellness, no? so you need to nourish it. No? So as I mentioned, our body is functioning as 
one interconnected, interrelated, and integrated systems. So, and more, more than that, the way our body functions uh, is ingrained into, uh, into nature. So, we have what we call chronobiology or circadian uh, medicine. So, it's hardwired to how uh, it's connected to, to nature, to light. No? So, we cannot change that. No? So, the problem is the way we live right now uh, is not aligned with how our body was designed. So, that's why we're getting, as I mentioned, we're getting sicker and sicker mentally, emotionally, and definitely physically. So, we not only have an, um, a pandemic, of infectious diseases like this, we've been having an epidemic of chronic diseases, of chronic lifestyle-related diseases, because everyone okay. is nutrient deficient. Wow. Okay. So that's already overall, but I'm going to yeah. touch more on the emotional maybe later on. But thank you for that, Doc Oyi. Let's head over to our other doctor, Dr. Lapuma. So from Doc Oyi, strengthening and reinforcing the importance of food for overall holistic and health development and importance, how about you telling us now about culinary medicine? Some might think it's merely expensive. When you think culinary, you know, it's like very, very high end. But it's not just about having expensive meals. In fact, how did it come about, this idea of culinary medicine? And what factors does it consider in terms of an individual's personal health and wellness? Go ahead, Dr. Lapuma. Um, actually, you said I could write a book about that and, and did. Um, <laughs> but the simple, the simple answer is that culinary medicine blends the art of cooking with the science of medicine to create restaurant quality meals that help to prevent and treat disease. And it's not expensive um, uh, because in culinary medicine, you learn to cook in quantity and you learn to have uh, preserve what you cook, either by freezing no. it or by making it into other meals. Um, uh, culinary medicine, uh, the first course in culinary medicine was taught mm -hmm in the United States Hi, David. Uh, in 2003 David. and um, at the State University of New York in Syracuse at their medical school with Michael Roizen, who heads the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Institute. And mm -hmm. he and I taught it together. Um, and now it's taught in about 50% of American medical schools. So it, it blends different parts of medicine, nutrition, and uh, biochemistry and internal medicine and the other kinds of subspecialties into a way to cook healthy and cook simply um, without saying any one diet is the best diet, without nice. saying okay. you have to not eat meat or you have to eat only plants or you have to, it has an omnivorous outlook. It thinks of meat as precious, like a mm -hmm. flavoring or seasoning, but it also embraces all styles of cooking and all traditions of cooking because each tradition of cooking has a wisdom in it that's that so actually true. often has been buried. Yes, that's so true. Everything has a, a story, something to anchor to, right? Here in the Philippines, right. we call that like our Lola, our grandmother's secrets, or like yes. traditional. Yes, and often the very healthiest cuisines are in fact your grandmother's cuisine, yeah. if she knew how to cook, and I assume <laughs> she did. So, so and actually the Philippines are fascinating that way because a lot of nutrition is kind of Eurocentric. It, it promotes the Mediterranean diet and the, the Pegan diet and the ketogenic diet, and, but actually Asian countries have this marvelous tradition that's now older of preparing vegetables and fruits and beans and, uh, and nuts and fish for that matter in simple ways that are highly flavorful that we've kind of lost sight of because mm -hmm. there are so many highly processed foods that are so quick and convenient and cheap. So our task in culinary medicine is to help people rediscover the way to cook as a way to change their health and the way to eat if they don't want to cook themselves, but they want someone else they live with to cook or a neighbor to cook, to, to change their, to make themselves well with what uh -huh. they eat. Okay, Dr. Lapuma, before I let you go, I wonder what led you to the practice of using food and nature as medicine then? What, what's your, the backstory behind you going this path? 
I've always been interested, Isa, in trying to bring fields outside of traditional medicine, allopathic medicine in the United States, um, and to some extent osteopathic medicine, but I'm an allopath trained in internal medicine. Mm -hmm. I bring fields that don't traditionally look like biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, infectious disease, cardiology into medicine, because I have found that those fields well outside of medicine, ethics in my case, um, culinary arts in my case, and agriculture and horticulture as well, have things to really contribute to how people get well, yes. how they feel better and live a healthier, bigger, a more embracing life. And those fields all have something to say in medicine and I think need to be at the table, need to be written on prescription slips. And, and I've always been fascinated with things that are outside the science, and the challenge of trying to bring them in. And I've had great colleagues helping me to do that along the way. Not just bring them in, but bring them on your table. So I love how Dr. Oi's holistic uh, approach to food and your approach to medicine and food are very, very much aligned. We're gonna get back to both of you in a bit. Thank you, Dr. Lapuma. Let's talk to our uh, lifestyle personalities here. I wanna begin with Tanya. Tanya, congratulations. Our very business, um, very, very, <laughs> Uh, successful businesswoman. You worked oh, in the thank corporate you. world for years before you opened up One Life. So yes. pushed you to actually put up a health and wellness center and transition to that from corporate world. I mean, was it that stressful? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in the corporate world for 10 years. Uh, it was really like a corporate setting. I handled one of the biggest coffee brands in the world. So you can imagine mm -hmm. the stress. Yeah. And um, my personality is I get obsessive. And so I was really obsessed with my career to the extent that I forgot about my health. And so after a few years, maybe on my seventh year, I started feeling like I was aging faster than I should. I was Ooh. gaining a lot of weight. My mm -hmm. hair was falling. My skin mm -hmm. was bad. And one, one day I looked in the mirror and I said, I have to make changes. And wow. so I started um, exercising. I started with yoga, going every day, and then noticing the difference in my body. And when I started feeling healthier, I also started making healthier choices. With and food. With food, yeah. yeah. Because once you start putting in the work in your body, right, and you start seeing results, you want to just keep going. And that's when I started having a healthier relationship with food. And um, what happened there is really when you transform your body, you transform your life. And in my case, I wanted to share the same benefits that I found um, when I exercised, when I ate, I ate better into a business. And that's yeah. when One Life came about. I love it. So I like yeah. how your journey started from exercise and then to food intake. Because yeah. other people will do food first and then exercise yeah. later. But I don't I like how... diet at all. Mm. So, so that's why I started with exercise first. And, and it's really true. I, I'm sure you know this too. When, when you take care of yourself, when you yes. do self-care, yeah. that goes also into food. Definitely. I agree with you 100% on that. Thank you very much. Let's have a head over to Doc Bok. I understand Doc Bok. And thank you for being transparent with us. You actually had personal health challenges. And this is what led you to go more plant-based when it comes to your food intake. Can you share with us uh, what were some of the reasons that made you push into a more plant-based diet? Doc Bok? Uh, Ten years ago, after I graduated from my medical uh, degree, uh, I had lots of issues. Like, I had obesity diabetes, hypertension, skin disorders like acne, and atopic dermatitis. And I usually have that um, anxiety attacks during um, when I have sleepless nights. So when I started to face a lot of patients in my own private practice, um, I, I saw myself like, I, I think I'm the patient. I'm not the doctor. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... Oh, okay. So I, I, I started to, again, like Tanya, uh, do a lot of exercise first. Okay. However, okay. Uh, the amazing story of exercise is really like I lost a lot of weight. You lost like, a lot of weight? For like 150. However, when I checked my blood lipids, 
yes, I lost a lot of weight, like 50 pounds. And then, however, I did not start with uh, proper um, food intake then. Okay? It's just like burning a lot of calories while taking a lot of calories also. So it's like in, in and out. But it doesn't really reflect into my uh, blood tests. Okay, I still have the highlighted um, the lipids and then my sugar is still up. So that's when I really decided to explore more on food. So uh, that part is really hard for me because again, like Tanya said, we love food. We, you know, mm -hmm. we just love to, it, it makes us happy. It's a social thing also. So really um, was very, very difficult. Okay. A lot of science behind it. Um, a lot of like confusing data in the internet. So I don't really know where to start. But you found the answers actually at the Institute of Functional Medicine, right? This yes. is how you got involved After, in functional medicine, yeah. Yes, uh, I kept looking into like, you know, uh, proper education uh, where I can, you know, look into the science of food as medicine. Um, mm -hmm. So I, uh, I found the Institute for Functional Medicine where I met Dr. Oyi and some other functional medicine experts here in the Philippines. So um, from there, um, I tried to use their protocols, their you know, um, backup studies, and a lot of like toolkits. We're going to get to that in a bit, but we're going to let it hang there. So again, it was quite a journey for Doc Bok who said, yes, I don't want to be hip a hypocrite, basically. Now, I'm the one supposed to, who are supposed to heal patients, but I myself am a patient who needed the help to find out. And echoing Tanya's uh, lifestyle and feedback, exercise is not enough. It's definitely about what you take into your body as well. Thank you for that. How about JP? JP, I just Hi. have to say this. In 2019, just last year, you were the first Filipino to finish the Dragon's Back race. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a 315 kilometer, 15,500 meter elevation gain and <laughs> loss foot race across the Welsh mountains. It's considered as one of the toughest mountain races in the world. And JP was the first Filipino to finish it. So I think it's fair to say you're probably the most active person in this panel. <laughs> So considering then someone like you who had to train for something like that, what made you start incorporating plant-based food in your meals? Because what was your diet like before and how did it change when you became this hardcore athlete? Well, normally for a lot of athletes, no, the diet tends to be very meat-heavy because you think yeah, protein. that protein is... Protein tends to help and, and all of that. But uh, about three years ago, I actually injured myself. I had a really bad injury. Mm -hmm. And it would take so much time to heal, basically. The, I, I, I twisted my ankle and, and it, would, it took months to, to properly heal and to get myself back on track for my training. And um, essentially, I tried going fully vegetarian during that time. Mm -hmm. And it really worked. Um, it for me personally, it made my healing process much faster. Um, also for training, I I found that I recover quicker, and when, when I when I have a higher, basically a cleaner diet, not necessarily vegetarian. I was vegetarian for about six months, mm -hmm. but I found that it's actually very difficult to be a vegetarian fully <laughs> when uh, you have to eat with family, you have to eat with friends, and you don't want to be that burden, you know. So. Yeah. Um, what what I did was um, I we eat about seventy percent vegetables, thirty percent meat, and and all whole food. Basically, it's real food. It's not processed processed food. Mm -mm. And I found that I recovered quicker. My body responded better to the training. And essentially, it's it's basically if you put garbage in, you also get garbage out. No matter how much you train. If you're, you know, you're like a hardcore athlete, you're training at a high level and, and you're, you know, you're constantly damaging your body every time you do training. You want your body to have the proper nutrients to, to rebuild itself every time you train. And when I, I found that when I, when I had all of the right nutrients, uh, my body was able to respond better and to train better for that. Uh, like you said, the last year I did the Dragon's Back race and during that race, 
every day we would run something like 80 kilometers, 3,000 meters of elevation gain. And at the end of the day, my body was not painful. It was, it was pretty amazing. I was pretty amazed because uh, I was expecting to be sore the next day. And I was okay. You know, I was fine. Um, wow. And during the race, the, the race organizers only fed us vegetarian food. So actually vegan food. So mm-hmm. for five days, we were just eating vegan food. And it, ac- it was actually basically cleaner. And, and your, your body is able to recover much, much faster than if you were eating um, processed meat or, or yeah. processed food, which you'd have a lot of inflammation added to the inflammation from training or from running. So having, having vegan food as, uh, as part of my training really, really helped uh, get me to that point where I was able to do uh, the Dragon's Back race last year. Nice. I'm going to get to the two doctors later on when I for, for the second round about how this training and recovery was helped with plant-based food. Thank you for that, JP, and congratulations. I'm going to hop over to Bea. Bea, you love cooking and food in it itself. That's why you have your own show on IG now. What motivated you to lean more towards plant-based ingredients and dishes? I mean, everybody has had their own story, and of course, we want to hear yours as well. Bea? Hi, um, sure. So I think for me, I wanted to be more focused on like my consumption and being conscious about the things that I consume, whether it's shopping, social media, or food. Mm. And I think that was, the, that was the key for me to like understand what, were, what was I consuming and was it good for me? Um, so I mean, when it came to shopping, it was focusing on like small businesses, local businesses, businesses sustainable. That or it's sustainable, yes. Yeah. Um, and it is about reducing my carbon footprint. So that was about um, eating more plant-based food, eating as much of the fruit and veg as possible, including, for example, like if I would use celery, I would eat the leaves in a salad. Um, the, the peel would go to my dogs. Mm-mm. I learned how to compost. So I live in an apartment, but I do bokashi composting. Um, and over quarantine, it was about like purchasing from farmer-led organizations and co-ops um, because this is an opportunity to support them during um, quarantine. Supporting um, regenerative biodynamic farmers like Hindi Weber of Holy Carabao, Gio mm-hmm. Espetal um, of Elements of Tomorrow. So it was about all of that. Obviously, I'm not perfect. You know, I love chocolates. I watch reality TV. <laughs> but I try to balance that by eating yeah. eat hummus and reading Ferrante. You know, it's all about balance. Thank you, Bea. I love how real you're being because, yes, again, four for very different urban and lifestyle personalities. But wherever you're coming from, at least for Bea, may I say this on behalf of the environment and the local communities, thank you for making these conscious, mindful choices because of reducing your carbon footprint and really being conscious and aware of where you source your materials, not just for what you wear, but also with what you eat. So how about we go up for the second round now for our panelists? Let's go back to Dr. Lapuma. So talking about cooking, Dr. Lapuma, aside from being a doctor in, in internal medicine, you're also a professionally trained chef. That's why you're widely known as Chef MD. So you already said how you started training and you're now teaching across practically 50% of the schools of, um, of um, med, med, you, medicine schools in the United States. How does that support your practice in culinary medicine? Because you are also now a professionally trained chef. So I was fortunate to go to cooking school and teach in cooking school in, um, in nutrition and in cooking skills and work in a great restaurant in the United States called Topolobombo in Chicago for four or five years with Rick Bayless. And, uh, and um, learning how to cook is probably the most powerful thing that anyone can do in trying, in, even at a very basic level, uh, very simply, to improve your health. You want to eat well, but if you can cook just a few things, you can enlarge your repertoire hugely. And we find that training uh, health-conscious clinicians um, and almost all of them are in cooking is really powerful because people love doing things that are tactile. Um, you, people love knowing how to use a knife, how to look like how to look fire in the face, 
how mm -hmm. to um, use pans and pots that are serious, um, and, and also how to cook for one, uh, if that's who you're cooking for. So I think cooking is a basic skill that, again, our ancestors had, um, that we've kind of shuttled to the side, but there are some tips and tricks and hacks that are really easy to do that make your life so much easier if you want to cook just a little. And that's the best way to not rely on super processed food and ultra processed food and to get more what we've been talking about, whole foods into your life, foods that are not highly processed and look like what they looked like when they came out of the ground or came out of the ocean or came off the tree. Okay, Dr. Lupuma, I'm going to take you up on that offer right now. Could you please name at least maybe uh, five herbs and spices that you can sure. include in your recipes so that it can benefit your health? Because what do these put in the food so that it will benefit our health? And maybe even how you cook them? Sure. Well, the magic is some of them you don't have to cook at all. Um, okay. A lot of fresh herbs and spices are just perfect out of the ground or from a, a leaf or from a tree. I love... Um, what we just heard about eating the leaves on celery in our in our kitchen gardens actually we use the whole plant we use the whole cilantro plant for example we mm -hmm. use the whole bok choy plant um, we oh, we have a lot of it, that bok choy <laughs> yes I know that's why I said so because when you when bok choy flowers and you know this uh, it's a cruciferous vegetable um, that means when it blooms it has a four pointed cross and there are many other cruciferous vegetables like um, uh, arugula and, and broccoli and wasabi and watercress um, and cruciferous vegetables help you know, detoxify poisons in the liver and um, bok choy which you cook gets some of that enzyme deactivated when you cook it so all you have to do is add a tiny bit raw back to the dish and the enzyme then reactivates and you can detoxify poisons in your liver again just Ooh. by that simple trick. Now so you asked about choy, herbs yeah? and spices. Yeah, okay. no, I love bok choy. I have great okay. recipes for it with um, shrimp, with um, soy sauce. It's really wonderful. Now, now, a lot of things that I don't, uh, that are used in Philippine cuisine, garlic and chili and calamansi, and we actually have a calamansi tree here in California, um, just so my Filipino friends can come around and pick it. Um, <laughs> and, and, because it's not grown here much, as you know. Um, I consider those really core ingredients rather than garnishes or accents or, uh, or uh, an herb or spice tweak. Um, but, but some people can consider them um, uh, herbs and spices. I, I don't, I think- uh, Decorative, right. yeah. An, an herb is a leaf on a plant and a spice is everything else in the plant, the seed, the root, the stem, um, the flower. So um, that's the culinary definition. I like rosemary leaves, um, which is not grown very much, I think, in the Philippines, but it, it, with time, it uh, has great studies to show that it actually inhibits the production of cancer-causing chemicals when you grill meat. Mm. If you just so marinate So that's why it's a perfect meat, rub. So it's good to marinate Exactly, and rub yes, you could do it as a dry rub. Um, mm -hmm. Oregano, the same thing actually, and it's strongly antibacterial, all kinds of oregano. There's oregano for every country in the world, I think. I have about, we grow Syrian and Mexican and Greek oregano, Dr. and I'm Lepuma. sure there are many more. Yeah, sorry, um, Dr. Lepuma, do you prefer dried or fresh for these um, rubs? I, I think you should use what you have. Okay. Um, I'm a really practical cook, but <laughs> um, the... If you use fresh, you usually need about a, um, three times more. The ratio is three to one fresh to dried. Um, and uh, I think fresh gives you a burst of flavor. Um, dried gives you kind of almost mm -hmm. all, always more subtle notes, almost savory notes. And, and those can be delicious. But when you're using them as a rub, as you just suggested, or as a marinade for meat or fish or chicken or tofu or seitan or... Um, or whatever you'd like to marinate, um, you, you, the, the compounds are dissolved really in the oil and the oil is what transfers the compounds to what you're marinating. Um, so I like 
rosemary for that. I like oregano for that and its antibacterial functions. I like um, ginger for that and its uh, anti love ginger. nausea. Okay. Yes, and, it's a, and of course it grows beautifully there as does turmeric, um, which uh, I also mm -hmm. love. And there's actually great data for turmeric preventing the progression of prediabetes to diabetes in patients who have elevated blood sugars but don't have full-blown diabetes yet. Um, it's just like it's three to five grams a day. Um, and turmeric, as you know, is better absorbed with a little bit of black pepper or the, the chemical piperine, which is what makes black pepper spicy. It also allows the curcumin in turmeric to be absorbed. Um, oh, that's a good tip. So let's add some pepper in our salabat. Salabat is like our yes. ginger tea. Okay. Or in with a, pepper. Or in a okay. it, with turmeric. The, uh, with turmeric. the pepper, okay. tur pepper helps the, the ginger. You can crystallize, you can crush and make a tea of, you can uh, mince it and just throw it in with the bok choy and the garlic. Um, uh, it needs a little bit of heat to have the flavor comes up, I think. Uh, and then my final spice um, for medicinal purposes and culinary ones is cinnamon. Um, because it is, it's just so round and spicy and it makes everything sweet without adding sugar. And I, I just, uh, and it's also been shown to lower blood sugar slightly in some people with the gene for it. Um, so these five spices, I think, uh, are the ones that occur to me, um, plus like five more that I don't really consider spices. If you, again, thinking of herbs as a leaf and a spice as everything else in the plant. Nice. Thank you very, very much for that, Dr. Lapuma. Now, going to Dr. Oi, I hope everybody took notes, especially Bea. Bea loves to cook. I'm sure Bea is already going to say, I'm going to try that with my dishes. So, I Dr. So. Oi, JP mentioned about how he went plant-based, practically vegetarian. How, what is the relationship between the recovery process and plant food? Dr. Oi, could you tell us more about that? Okay. Well, we're all hungry now after yeah. talking about Puma. So. I know. I, I want to like... <laughs> no. Uh, well, most plants... Come on over. It's just like what Dr. Lepuma mentioned, have anti-inflammatory effect. Of course, when with JP's uh, rigorous training and uh, events that he went through, uh, our body uh, undergoes damage. You know? So, of course, the body is also capable of repair. So, one of the mechanisms how our body uh, addresses this is through inflammation. But most plant-based have are immune modulators or have anti-inflammatory effects. So that's why the, his body recovers faster. And then mm -hmm. that, uh, there's a modulated response of the immune system, not resulting further to more damage. Uh, hence, at times, that's why athletes get injured if they lack all of these phytonutrients and phytochemicals. And as well as, uh, as mentioned, balanced nutrition is important because even plants have proteins and proteins is one of the essential macronutrients that we need in order to repair our body. So as mentioned, food is medicine. So everything that our body as a system needs, all of these substrates, micronutrients, macronutrients, uh, phytonutrients, as well as uh, different enzymes or even neurotransmitters, these are all uh, formed through uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the metabolic substrates that we get from a whole, real, unprocessed foods. Okay, so we talked about types of food already. Anti-inflammation, how it helps not just our minds, our feelings. Here's one thing though I want to, before I let you go, Doc Oi. Everyone thinks when it comes to food especially, and when you say food equated to weight, yun, ba? equated to weight. When it comes to that, is it all about numbers? Is it all about counting calories? That's the common mistake. I mean, the, the law of thermodynamics cannot be uh, applied to our body because our body is an adaptive biologic system. Whatever mm -hmm. you do to it, it will create a protective response. No? So if you deprive yourself of food, uh, you'll probably be losing weight, uh, but that will just be temporary because sooner or later, that body, that biologic system will adapt. No? So it's not really just about uh, counting calories. It's really about the composition of the food the balance of the different macronutrients. As I've mentioned, all of these macronutrients, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, are all equally important and vital to how our body will function optimally. So that's why we don't mention the word diet. You know, because when yeah. you say diet, that means to say you're eliminating. Eliminate. Yeah, eliminate. Macronutrients. So, but our body as a system um, is hardwired to utilize all of these fats um, in order to uh, make our cell wall, you no? Know, 
proteins for repair and as well as for the macronutrients for the energy for i mean carbohydrates for the energy so everything is equally important thank you for that great reminder doc oi now let's get back to our four lifestyle panelists tanya have you tried to become a vegetarian i mean have you tried it because we've been talking about going uh, plant based a lot and how was that experience for you um so yeah i did go vegetarian a few years back for a whole year i was a strict vegetarian um, it was because i was a purist um i ate eggs so it's a certain kind of um, lacto ovo I, I think uh, anyway i was vegetarian strictly for a year it was because i watched this docu called what the health on netflix and immediately cold turkey i said no more meat and <laughs> at the time i was also training for a marathon and just uh-huh. like jp it was really really great for my body it felt good but at the same time it it became unsustainable for me because i was with my family my husband yeah. everyone else around me was eating everything they weren't vegetarians and and to them it seemed like i was depriving myself and and to me it seemed like i was depriving myself of those joyous moments with family where we can share meals where we can share moments and and more than me being uncomfortable uh with that situation where i was just eating vegetables and they were eating everything it was more them they were feeling uncomfortable and always minding me and mm-hmm. i felt like they felt like i was missing out and it made them uncomfortable and seeing them you know always bothered where to eat because tanya can't eat there or oh yeah. no what will tanya eat kawawa naman siya and i didn't like that feeling i was depriving mm-hmm. them also of those moments with me and yeah. so what i realized was what worked better for me was still having those joyous moments with family um i just tried to influence them to always paint our plates always have a serving of vegetable there change our rice to adlai yeah. you know small sustainable choices that we can all do together and so we can still have those joyous moments together so no deprivation of of food or also choices. no depri- or choices yeah, yeah correct i love that story and again how <laughs> we, even though that even though it is our personal health journeys let's not forget mm-hmm. we have families we Correct. have partners. we we live in units diba so it's and not Filipinos just Filipinos love to eat i mean yes. your your mom will serve you something and she'll be hurt if you don't eat it right yeah that's true that's true thank <laughs> you for that tanya oh dito na mata kay doc bok doc bok given your health difficulties and thank you again for being transparent about that how did you then find this program or food habits that then worked for you because like you said you wanted to treat your patients but you wanted to be an example for them and not you know someone who's like i ako ren i need to do this so how did you put yourself in that journey to find food programs and what food works for you well it's really hard to start actually when i started eating uh, you know cool foods i started with an apple <laughs> okay Like one up an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I literally that's true, really huh? did that. That's And, true. <laughs> yeah, that's the first, no? Cuz it's really hard for me to really eat vegetables. I grew up not eating vegetables to be honest. I ate a lot of junk and processed and highly like sugary foods. So that's my first step. And then after a while, my body um I think started to learn from like or maybe had a relationship with that apple and it it evolved into another like I started eating like tomatoes and then nuts and seeds and then introducing more dark greens and then now um I'm more into like an intense <laughs> intense program. Okay, so, what this intense program entail? Like what's your okay. diet? Yeah. I, I have like four tips for everyone. So because I, I I cannot assure myself if I can really eat a vegetable like today, I'm not sure. So my first my first step is to um do smoothies okay like dr lapuma said i really love bok choy not only it res- resounds to my but really okay. bok choy i mix it with ginger and then i just blend it with water then that's it oh i'm sorry okay so like dr lapuma said okay yeah. we love bok choy okay so, yeah, smoothies so i mix it with my green Yeah, I mix it with parsley, with ginger, with cucumbers, and then just 
just put up like a little bit of monk fruit to just sweeten it because that's my um that's my um security for that day if i don't eat vegetables for that day at least i had that um green a drink sweet. Yes. And then my next um, technique is to, I count colors on my plate. So I, I need at least four to five colors. Like I need to see orange, yellow, red, green, of course. Green, yeah. And some like violet or maybe red from the onions. So mm -hmm. I count it. I don't, I don't really count the num uh, how, how much I eat from each color as long as there's a little bit of each one. Count color and not calories. I like that. Yes. Tip. I, I count yeah. the colors. And then the, the most extreme part here is I try to really achieve um, the Walsh protocol, okay? The Walsh protocol is like nine cups of vegetable servings per day, okay? That's really... Nine actually, cups? Yes, actually, she <laughs> wants us to take 15 cups a day, okay? Wow! Yeah, but the minimum for like maybe Filipino size like us, she said around six cups. But I, again, I, I want to achieve the nine cups, okay? So maybe... Okay, just to give everyone a background about the nine cups, it's like divided into three groups. The first three cups would be the cruciferous vegetables, okay? That's bok choy, that's broccoli, cauliflower, yeah. and other sulfur-rich um, vegetables like onions, onion mm -hmm. flakes, garlics, because that's where, again, the detoxifying compounds comes from. So when you eat that, you really detoxify toxins um, out of your liver or out of the system. Second, the next three three cups would be the colorful vegetables. That's where you put on the starches and the fruits, okay? So you put maybe apples, some um, squash, um, beets, um, carrots. And then the last three cups would be the dark leafy greens, okay? That's where um, the lettuce, the arugula, and other dark greens that we have here locally in the Philippines, like talbos of kamote, talbos ng ganyan. So we have the Bahay Kubo. That's where you put in all this together. So that's how I do my, um, my program. But honestly, I don't reach the nine cups yet. Maybe six, maybe, or maybe five. Okay. Nice. Again, these are things that we can all learn I introduce, from. I want, mm -hmm. And lastly, I believe in uh, life nutrition. Okay, what's life nutrition? It's like um, when... Sorry, Doc Bok? Uh-oh. We lost Doc Bok. Okay. Uh, he believes in life nutrition. That's what I got to, from him. Uh, but get that. Uh, there you go. Plant my um, herb garden. So from time to time, I pick like mint or basil or rosemary, arugula, and then I make it as a tea. Okay. So be so it from it. shakes to teas and just really incorporating these nine cups. It doesn't all have to be in one day. But it can be distributed every day as long as you have a single cup satisfied. Thank you for yes. that, Doc Bok. And for now, I'm going to hop over to Bea. Bea, what sort of changes then? Because you're being so uh, conscious about your choices and, and not just necessarily for yourself, but also considering economics, local sourcing, and the environment. What changes then, effects that you noticed that you loved when you chose this kind of uh, lifestyle? Um, well, I had type 2 diabetes, so mm -hmm. um, I was able to reverse my diabetes. Um, it helped with my sleep cycle. Um, it also helped with my hyperacidity. I used to eat a lot of meat before, um, and it also had to do with the, the schedule of eating and the kind of refined processed foods I was eating. And I was also feeling sluggish, so when I shifted my meal patterns and the types of food that I ate, you know, it, it helped with all those things. Wonderful. And even with sleep, speaking of sleep, I want to go back to Dr. Oyi. Uh, Dr. Oyi, so hearing from all of our panelists, be it their wonderful choices, how everyone really has their own personal journeys. This is what we love about our panelists today. It's not one size fits all. You don't have to be a purist. You can go strict at a certain time uh, of, your, of whatever it is you're doing, right? But either way, it's also all about sustainability because you're not just eating for yourself. You have families, you have partners. So Doc Oi, here's one last uh, maybe thing to consider when it comes to the intake of food. Sleep, especially now again during these times, sleep deprivation is something everyone can relate to. So late night eating and even again, it comes to how we choose our food. How does this affect nutrient requirements and over, overall health? Dr. Oi, when it comes to sleep. 
I mentioned already a while ago about chronobiology. No? So as mentioned, mm -hmm. the way uh, the biological design of our body is hardwired to, to our environment. No? So we have what we call um, a master clock in our brain. We call it the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is in the hippocampus. So this is the mm -hmm. one that tells our body that it is daytime and it's nighttime. No? So, and this is connected to how we, uh, how we are able to process our food. That's why we tell people not to eat late at night because, you know, this biological clock is connected to what we call uh, different organs of our body have what we call peripheral clocks. No? So like our stomach, it stops functioning. Uh, stops digesting after nine o'clock. Okay, so really? yeah, that's why there's a certain time that we should be asleep. No, so we're we're supposed to be asleep by eleven p.m. and um, be awake by six by by six a.m. because you know by two o'clock in the morning, our bodies, uh, all the systems of our body are in a regenerative mode, right? So except for the liver and the skin. So but so if you're not if you're sleeping late and you're eating late, no, so. So some of the food that you are consuming will not be metabolized. Hence, mm -hmm. that's why you, you sleep a little late, you gain a little weight. No? So <laughs> that, that's how the body, uh, as I mentioned, is designed. So we're really supposed to be asleep at night and uh, awake at daytime. We have what you call a chrono nutrition. No? So, but if you're altering this because of the kind of lifestyle that you have, like we have a lot of call center uh, yeah. agents, that they're awake at night and um, they're um, asleep at daytime. Aside from you not being able to, um, uh, to be able to produce several substrates that your different systems need, like for example, the different cells uh, that is needed by your immune system to fight off um, invaders or, or uh, microorganism. That's why you see when you're sleep deprived for several days, if you sleep, let's say three hours, four hours consecutive, several days, then what happens after, afterwards? Your immune system weakens, right? So because you're not able to produce the different immune cells that is, uh, and the immune system, it's responsible for defending and repairing us. So uh, it's not just about um, exercise. It's not just about nutrition. It's also mm. important for us to consider the value of sleep. You know? So these yes. three are what we call the, the three positive determinants of health. If you don't compromise these three lifestyle factors, you are guaranteed to remain healthy. So you cannot eat your way out into being healthy lang. No, you cannot yeah. exercise your way out into being healthy. Everything is equally important. I love that reminder. Thank you very much. Sleep, food, exercise, all these have to be considered so you can be healthy. Oh, that was wonderful. Please take notes, everybody. Now, before I let everybody else go for our panel, let's go back to Dr. Lapuma. Dr. Lapuma, thank you for your tips, not just from herbs and spices, or how to really go back to the joys of cooking, because cooking can be simple. Just go back to the practices at home. So what advice then can you give not just fellow doctors, but really everybody gathered here today uh, to go back to looking at food as something that can benefit you medicinally again? Dr. Lapuma? I think Sorry, one way is, it, is still here, Dr. Lapuma? I think one way is, it, is to try to um, not consider food that you can't eat, but instead food that you can oh, let's eat. Let's give that another try. I, uh, yeah. No. So are we up? Yeah. Okay, um, yes. so we can adding food, Thanks. yes, adding food is the way to think about this instead of subtracting it. You want to add foods that are good for you instead of subtract foods or just subtract foods that are bad for you. So I like to think about, I like um, Doc Bach's example of starting with an apple. I tell people who, um, who want to eat for health and are shipwrecked, to try to have a vegetable every day if they're not eating any. And if they are eating some, to eat a vegetable at each meal. Because it makes you think about, okay, what's a vegetable? And the United States, most vegetables eaten are potatoes. And they're mostly fried and in French fries um, and in potato chips. But, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that as a treat, but it isn't, it ought not to be an everyday food. The real vegetables are ones that are the color of the rainbow, uh, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, mm -hmm. blue, indigo, and violet. And 
Um, so I like people to try to have a vegetable at every meal. Um, I like them to use more herbs and spices like we talked about. That's yep. a way to get anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, gram for gram, herbs and spices, particularly dried ones, are richer in anti-inflammatories than almost any other food because we don't use a ton of them. And they're so powerfully and powerfully flavored. And lastly, if people are looking for one dish that will they can fit in, um, it's for me, it's a soup. Ooh, it's a soup that's because easy. it is easy. And it's really flavorful with chili and garlic and and uh, you guys grow lots of mung beans. I really like mung beans. Yeah, and um, use any broth. Don't forget the broth, like use bones, anything else you've eaten. Bone broth, yeah. chicken broth. Um, I think that's a great, I mean, because of the depth of flavor mm -hmm. and because you get a little bit of collagen in it, the protein from the, from the bones and from the gelatin. Um, and for that, it's satisfying. It takes a long time to eat soup if you do it with a spoon and not just drink it. So, <laughs> um, it's a way to start getting healthy and actually look at your food. You actually have to take time to, to spoon soup. You can't just inhale a Twinkie on the way to that subway, you know? Yeah. So um, those are my three kind of basic ways to think about food as medicine. And they're really about thinking about food and that, as delicious it can be with the medicine kind of coming in the side door. Now, if we're talking about like, how do you lower your cholesterol with food? How do you treat your diabetes with food? How do you change your rheumatoid arthritis with food? How do you prevent a stroke with food? Then there are specific foods and specific ways to approach it that have been demonstrated in research-based trials to be effective. And that's more of a protocol. But here, I think a general approach to being healthy, and most of us fortunately are in that category, is to use these three tips. Have a vegetable at every meal, um, eat more soups, and uh, use more herbs and spices. Thank you very, very much. Again, that was our two medical experts. Thank you to Dr. Lapuma and Dr. Oyi Balburias. We're gonna hear more from our lifestyle panelists in a bit because we will be open, opening up Q&A. But for now, we do wanna introduce someone very, very special to also share something very exciting with all of you. So to everybody, to our panelists, hang on tight because now we are going to be joined by the Sakaya Marketing Head. Everybody, please welcome Ms. Bernice Gonzalez. Hi, Ms. Bernice. Hey. Thanks, Lisa. I hope everyone enjoyed the talk today. Um, I, I hope that you were able to take note of a lot of tips that you can apply on your wellness journey. Um, part of Sakaya's advocacy is actually um, to help people uh, make smarter choices when it comes to food so that they can improve their health and well-being. But before I talk about our new product that we'll be introducing today, let me spend a few minutes to talk about Sinovate Pharma Corporation. Sinovate Pharma Corporation is actually the natural products company of Unilab, and it's dedicated to developing um, products that are evidence-based um, and uh, evidence-based and uh, high quality and following pharmaceutical standards. So the entire uh, product development process of Sinovate is science-backed. So that means that from the time we source the raw materials, we have to ensure that these are of high quality and uh, ultimately have the best potency and purity. And down to the testing, uh, each of our finished products goes through stringent testing in our pharma grade facilities to ensure that they are free of mycotoxins, molds, um, heavy metals, and so on, and pesticides. Um, aside from that, uh, so because of that, consumers can rely on the safety and purity of our products. Let me now talk about Sekaya. So Sekaya is actually, for those who are not familiar with the brand, Sekaya is the first brand of Sinovate Pharma Corporation. And Sekaya is intent on prescribing nature through our products. So our products are plant-based, um, functional health uh, products that harness the healing benefits of nature and backed by scientific evidence and pharma-grade processes. So please uh, watch this video to know more about Sakaya, the brand. Hyperurbanization is here. More than half of the population now live in cities. It has broken our link to nature that is integral to us. 
putting our bodies in a state of deficiency. Experts call it nature deficit disorder, a growing health concern among people living in the city. In response, people tend to consume any natural product to make up for this deficiency, unaware that it might even be harmful to them. Sakaya. The brand that restores your link to nature. Sakaya harnesses the healing benefits of nature. Validated by the exacting standards of science. In merging the best of nature and science, Sakaya creates the ideal solutions that bring nature back into our lives. Prescribing nature. Sakaya. Okay, so now I, I'm actually very proud to introduce um, our newest line for the Sakaya, for Sakaya brand, and this is the Sakaya Raw Actives. So Sakaya Raw Actives is a curated line of nutrient-dense superfoods to help keep people um, healthy and active. And we, the products are made of uh, whole foods that are minimally processed um, to ensure that the nutrients are still um, intact. And at the same time, these whole foods are um, uh, USDA certified organic, non-GMO, and non-irradiated. So you can ensure, you can be assured of the quality and purity of the products. Um, as you can see on the screen, we actually have six Sakaya Raw Actives products that we're, we're introducing today. And give me a few minutes to take you through each one of them so that you can see uh, which one uh, is best for you. Okay, so the first one is uh, Daily Greens. So Daily Greens, as you can see, contains organic spinach and kale, and it provides the micronutrients needed for energy metabolism and vascular health. So what I like about Daily Greens is that at a time like this, when um, it's not as easy to get access to fresh produce, it's good to have this on hand because it's powder form and you can easily incorporate it in your, in your beverages or even your meals. Okay, the next one, is barley green. Okay, barley green is actually made of barley grass, which is a good source, a very high source of chlorophyll. And what we have is organic barley green, so the chlorophyll also can help here to support uh, the body's detoxification process. Okay, the third one is maca, maca factor. So maca factor is great because it's an adaptogen. It comes, it contains maca root, which is an adaptogen, and that helps to, your body to adapt better to stress and also for you to have more energy, okay? We also have the power beat. So this is great actually for those who are more athletic. So it boosts, it helps boost the nitric oxide production in your body so that you can have more energy. So for people like JP, this, this type of product <laughs> is, is perfect, yeah. And then we also have our protein powders. So we have two protein powders. We have the vegan protein. So vegan protein contains organic, uh, pea protein, uh, quinoa, and brown rice. And it contains, every serving is equivalent to 18 grams of protein to help you achieve optimum levels of protein and nutrients. And it also has uh, potassium, calcium, and iron. And finally, our last uh, but not the least, it's pea protein. So pea protein has a higher um, protein content because each serving is equivalent to 23 grams of protein. Um, and it's also very rich in arginine and lysine. Um, so it helps you achieve your optimum levels of protein for the day. Okay, so as you can see, our products are really, um, as I've mentioned, they're minim minimally processed whole food um, in powder format. And as such, they're very convenient and easy to incorporate in your meals, um, whether they be, uh, you know, um, uh, your favorite breakfast meal, like oatmeal or pancakes, or you, you can even just mix it with water um, to consume it, or even mix it with your juices. So there are really a lot of um, things you can do, and it's something that people can get creative with regards to using these products. So, and in line with um, Sakaya's advocacy, as I mentioned, of um, helping people make smarter choices when it comes to their, their nutrition, um, we're happy that we're able to share these products with you today and also this informative session that we hope will um, inspire you on your wellness journey. 
Definitely. Thank you very, very much. By the way, where can we find these products, Ms. Burns? Ms. Bernice? Okay, because so again, congratulations on the launch, Sekaya Raw Actives. Where can we get it? Okay, so Sekaya Raw Actives is actually available in a lot of places. So in retail, you can get it from the real food stores. So there are real food stores in Alabang and also in BGC. Um, online, we're actually in Shopee, um, Lazada, and Zalora. So just look for the essential store in those platforms. Or you can also check out the Sinovate flagship store in Lazada. Aside from that, um, you can also just direct message us um, through our Facebook or IG. So just go to at PH on Facebook or IG and just send us a message there and we'll be happy to, um, to get in touch with you regarding the products. Um, and finally, um, for those who want to just SMS or Viber, you can also do that um, through uh, 0917 5 Sekaya. So you nice. can message us there. Yep. That's an easy number. 09175. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Miss Bernice, don't go anywhere. We want to keep you here for the panel discussion. Actually, okay. the panel discussion is over. We're about to open it up to questions from our audience members. And wow, over 200 participants in our gathering today. So to our panelists, let's bring everybody back from our two medical experts to our four urban and lifestyle personalities. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts earlier. But by the way, whether you want a dose of your daily greens, a nutrient boost, or an additional plant-based protein to help you through the day, thank you very much because Sekaya Raw Actives has it all. So please don't forget to share your favorite Sakaya moments and learnings today via your social media accounts with three hashtags, Sakaya PH, Raw Actives, and Prescribing Nature. Also tag us please at Sakaya PH on Facebook, on Instagram. And like I said, here are some of our questions already from the Q&A box. It begins with Miss Bernice. Miss Bernice, how is Sakaya Raw Actives different from other superfood supplements? that's available in the market. How is it different? Okay, so as I've mentioned, Sinovate Pharma, um, who's, who's come up with uh, Sakai Raw Actives, is very much uh, into ensuring the stringent uh, testing of our products and ensuring the quality of our raw materials. So that's one thing that differentiates uh, Sakai Raw Actives is that we can be assured that the products, at the, of the product's purity and potency. At the same time, the products um, underwent very minimal processing to ensure that the nutrients and phytonutrients in, in the products are still intact. Nice. So, and, and then, of course, if you look at every product, every each pack, you will see the seals of quality there. So we have the USDA certified organic seal. Um, the products are non-GMO, non-irradiated. Um, so those are all seals of quality that you will find in all our SRA, in all our Sakaya Raw Actives products. I like that because it comes to mind what Bea is after. Again, it's all about conscious food choices, about the mm -hmm. sourcing, how was it handled, right? Mm -hmm. So in fact, I'm going to bring it back to the four. So to my four uh, panelists, Doc Bok, Bea, of course, uh, we also have uh, JP and uh, Miss, sorry, Maria. Anya. I know, na pa Maria ako because it's your middle name. <laughs> okay, what did you learn then? Everyone has a personal journey and it was actually showcased by the four of you. So what are your sustainability practices, experiences, learnings in general that you'd like to share with everyone because each journey is unique? Maybe I'll start with Tanya. Tanya? Hi. Sorry. Okay, there. Hello. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. Um, for me, uh, one of the greatest learnings for me when it comes to health, eating healthy, having a healthy lifestyle, is that there's really no one size fits all. And if it's something uh, that someone does and it doesn't fit, work for you. Also, our bodies are all made differently. So you really need to trial and error. Um, like for me, vegetarian, um, it's great but it doesn't work with the rest of my lifestyle. Yeah. Or for example, um, extreme diets, I don't like depriving myself. I like, I like being, feeling nourished. And so take the time out to really s see what works for you. No one size fits all. And um, when it comes to eating healthy, uh, it has to be sustainable. So try to figure out hacks that can work for you. 
uh, for me, I'm busy all the time. I'm, I'm running a business. I'm trying to also manage my household. I talk to a lot of people every day. And so I don't have a lot of time to meal prep. And mm-hmm. so I like little hacks. For example, like my daily greens, I like mixing it with water early in the morning. So I get that in first thing in the day. Um, I like meal prepping on Sundays, my me- meals for the week. So you have to find ways to make your choices work for you too. So that you don't have to feel like it's such an effort or such a, you know, like I have to yep, remind yep. myself. So you have to day. make it easy and sustainable. Yeah. Because if it's too hard also, you're not going to be able to commit to it, I feel. And if we're go- going to gun for living healthy for life, mm-hmm. it has to be choices that that you can do and commit to and continuously uh what you call this uh consistently do every day yes definitely thank you for that tanya bea what about you bea learning Um, from your journey and especially with you i love how bea actually embraced that yes you are one of those who like to experiment you if you talk about fat diets you want to check into it look into it so yes bea yeah, so I, I'm the opposite of most people here. I've tried the fads. I did keto. Um, not so great for me. Um, I was, you know, a super hardcore, low-fat, low-carb vegan for a while. Um, not so great for me either. Um, I think the answer was like finding a balance in terms of the foods that I eat, right? Carbs were not my enemy. Um, but I think one of the things that made me um, able to incorporate plant-based foods into my diet is I think a lot of people get bored with eating the same thing over and over again. And I think oh, yes. that's when you start fantasizing about, you know, a bucket of chicken nuggets, right? It's like if you just keep eating the same thing. And then that's, that's what happens to me at 1 a.m. Instead of sleeping, like um, Doc Oye recommends, I'm just like holding my phone thinking, should I call for nuggets? <laughs> I haven't yet. Um, so I think one of the things that I was able to do was um, incorporating dishes that are maybe new or unfamiliar. So I would look at um, Indian, Middle Eastern, Japanese, um, plant-based recipes, um, even regional recipes. Like when I went to Mindanao and I discovered Tiula Itum and I did a vegetarian version or, you know, simple things like mushroom and mongostu. Oh yeah, that's, found, that sounds good. Yeah, stuff like that helpful. Um, I make a meal plan. And when I make a meal plan, it helps me reduce food waste. So if I'm going to use mung beans or mungo for a soup at the start of the week, I use half of it for a stew later on. Or with veggies, I'm going to use the veggies for a salad first, and then I'll incorporate it into other dishes. And then by the end of the week, the leftovers, everything in the fridge will be in a frittata. So I think meal plans help me with decreasing food waste, and being able to be inventive about the foods that I eat throughout the week. Um, I think just scheduling that before you order food also helps you organize your life. Yeah. Um, and then I think um, also learning to like have variety. So like if I have grains, I'll mix it up. I'll have quinoa one day, adlai the next, farro or barley, just to like change up the things that I eat. And then I think one thing also to make things exciting and which a practice that I do is to have like a trade or food trade with friends. So like, you know, every week you guys share the foods that you make because I cook like large large batches and I live alone. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I'm going to get sick of that in a week. So it's good if I think I'm going to make a large batch of this stew. I'm going to share it with some neighbors. I bought a bike during quarantine to decrease also my, uh, to get exercise and lessen my carbon footprint when I distribute food to friends. Um, So having that food circle, having a chat group where you share, these are the dishes I'm going to eat for this week, who wants some, I think makes you look forward to meals. And also you don't have to cook it. It's free food. Excellent tips from Bea. Thank you for that, Bea. And definitely thank you for pointing out, you're right, nagsasawa tayo sa kain lang ng kain ng the same thing every day. Thank you very yeah. much for that, Bea. How about uh, Doc? No, let's go to JP first, and I'm going to end with Doc Bok. JP, what about you? Learnings, especially personal hmm. journey when it comes to your health. Well, um, personally, I think it's it's all about making things as easy as possible for yourself. Um, a lot of a lot of health books, a lot of things you see online, 
they really in especially in the Philippines like um what like was mentioned earlier in the Philippines we talk a lot about the healthy food which is not really Filipino food you know mm. we talk about kale all, all of these different things quinoa um a lot of it is stuff that are specialty you know specialty food and what's what for me what i've found um is you know you just go to your local palengke punta kay palengke and you, and you see what's actually available there and that's what you use you know? a lot of it is actually very healthy uh, a lot of it is also very cheap no a lot of people have this misconception of going vegetarian or going healthy is an expensive thing and i think maybe for some restaurants it is because they're they're really expensive restaurants that are healthy restaurants but um, of locally if it's yeah local, i mean well, what yeah. you see locally in your local local market is a lot of really healthy food i live in trinidad in 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 benguet which is basically the vegetable bowl of of this region and good for you <laughs> I, i'm lucky you know it's easy to go yeah. out and, and get vegetables but for a lot of filipinos uh there's this concept misconception uh, if you go to a calendaria konti lang yung gulay eh. it's mostly meat like you know yung, yung turo turo puro carne and then there's like a little vegetable corner uh there no but but generally um we can eat healthy without it being expensive and and also another thing is um don't be too hard on yourself, you know, like have that burger once in a while, go to the McDonald's, para okay lang yun, you know, uh, as long as most of, most of what you eat is healthy, the once a week McDonald's binge eating, you know, forgive yourself for that. I've, I've, you know, when I'm training sometimes, you really crave the burger or you really crave the, that big meal and, and as long as, you know, the net, uh, net intake is actually healthy food then it's actually uh it's okay you know especially for your mental health and especially you know you you're with friends and family okay lang to go to a mcdonald's get a double burger or whatever <laughs> nice thank you for that jp and last but not least doc doc learnings please and by the way at this point while it's happening our doctors and everyone who's been asking questions they've been answering okay so check out the answers in the q a but for now, let's hear from Doc Bok about his learnings on personal journeys. Doc Bok? My, my, my tip is to just start somewhere. I mean, we don't need to be you know, aggressive on this. I, I know how, how hard it is for everyone to just change their diet like overnight. It, it didn't happen to me like, like that. Maybe it went through like years, okay? So actually, it's like an, it's, you need to just grow from where you are, like, okay? So... Like me, I started from an apple and then, you know, added, added some more vegetables. Actually, I, I, I thought like eating more fruits would be healthy, but I was wrong. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> I ate a lot of fruits and then shifted to more like um, leafy greens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, like what JP said, we are always intimidated, but by what we see on like um, on social media or, or on the television, we always see like um, the non Filipino food, um, like vegetables. So we always think that, yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Of course, well, we don't have that here. I mean, we, we don't have most of them here, but we always forget the bahay kubo. Okay. Yes. So if you go to your um, local market, whatever you see there, you just try to like explore, okay? Try this flavor. Um, if you see an exotic plant or maybe a vegetable, you should not uh, no, um, um, avoid it. You should, you know, at least try, try it. it. Ask, ask first if it's a no, huh? if it's something you can actually eat. That's one thing lang from me. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you said of exotic, uh, no, baka, baka mamaya it's just growing at the side of the road and you're going to go for it. Make sure you also no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, of course. So we, make, we, we need to make sure it's edible. Okay? Yes. But, but, but I mean, if it's exotic, like it's unique to your diet. Like yeah. here in lowlands, we don't, we don't very uh, we rarely see purple like red cabbage unlike in trinidad where jp is it's always like cheap there so when i see this purple colors in the local groceries i i really get them so Doc, again uh, we don't mm -hmm. can we have a full, quick reminder of your four steps earlier i know i asked that during the panel discussion someone in the q a is asking right now could you please quickly okay. repeat the four steps that you brought up earlier to help okay the first step is like smoothies okay sakaya sakaya raw active is maybe one of my um, go to now because it's it's just new to me so i'm going to mix it up with my um 
vegetables like the super bok convenient choy, parsley. To use. It's very convenient, yeah. and it's um, it's going to be you know you're sure about the quality also. So, mm -hmm. but I will mix it with the fresh ones. Not only take it like. Uh, yeah, like acid put a banana in there or other fresh veggies. So first yes. is a smoothie. The second, yeah. second one is like the colors. We we need to count colors. No, we don't need to consume a lot of like of each one of the colors. At least we need to see minimum like maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon on your plate on the first time. Okay, so you want to see uh, the Roy Jebiv like yeah the rainbow color. colors. Um, then the next, the third one would be the more aggressive one, the nine cups of vegetables. Okay, Oof. that's like extreme. But if everyone can, a that, I assure you, I mean, most of maybe 90% yeah. would be really healthy. Yeah. So, and the last one would be tea. Okay. Again, tea. teas are good um, infusions. Yes, herbal teas. Mm -hmm. It's um, good infusions that we can actually do every night hack it like yeah ginger tea turmeric tea mint tarragon we have cinnamon you can mix up with your butterfly tea the blue flower so you, you can just mix up anything you want as long as you like tea so thank you for those quick four tips doc Bok. thank you for repeating be it from smoothie all the way to a tea your nine cups and definitely count your colors instead of adjectives uh, sorry count your colors instead of your calories I'm going to go now to Dr. Lapuma, who don't forget, Dr. Lapuma actually said soup also. If it's the one thing you want to add to your diet besides smoothie or tea, why not put it in soup, right? So Dr. Lapuma, this question is from you, from Bernadette Estrella Arellano. Moringa, something the Philippines is very rich in, is processed into powder for convenience and more nutrients to benefit from because there's less moisture content. So what is a happy balance between best culinary recipe of food for nutrition to increase appetite and the dried and more nutrition packed herbs in food? So what would be a nice recipe to balance the dried out ones and the food nutrition, best culinary recipes? Dr. John, sorry, you're on mute. Yeah, thank you, sir. Doctor. Thank you, Issa. Um, it's such an interesting question because um, so many foods are transformed so that they're more convenient for us. And we all know that they're actually best in their whole form. But what if you can't get them in their whole form? Can the dried form substitute? Yeah. Um, and in the case of Moringa, um, there's a lot of, uh, it's been, as you know, it has a traditional use as the medical term is a galactagogue. It helps um, women produce breast milk reportedly. And it, I know it's used that way as are many other plants. Um, and um, it's supposed to protect the liver and protect against cancer. And, uh, but I'm not, I haven't actually seen any data about that. It Ooh. is kind of, it's high in amino acids and high in, um, in some micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Um, and it tastes pretty good. So I'm for it. Um, I think it can be used dried. I think you want to know why you're using it. Whenever you start something like this, um, like a dried powder, you want to know, okay, um, am I doing it just for fun? Am I doing it for flavor? Do I expect to benefit from it? And if I do expect to benefit from it, how long do I have to get the benefit? Um, I always tell my patients, if they're having a symptom that they want to improve with food, that to give themselves uh, about a month and to grade that symptom from, a, from zero to 10. Mm. Zero, no symptoms at all. 10, worst possible. What, what is your, if, if the symptom is a GI symptom, if you have an upset stomach and your stomach growls at night and it, it causes insomnia and you're hungry all the time. Okay, those are four symptoms. And so you grade them from zero to 10 and you write them down and then you put the paper away in a drawer and you come back in a month having had um, undertaken probiotics or prebiotics or a, a dried powder to help with that symptom. And then you give yourself another, you go through the four symptoms again, and you give yourself a score. Nice. These are called, this is called a therapeutic trial in medicine when we do it for medication. And it's the same for food. So what you're trying to do is figure out whether it actually helped you in some way. And that's, I think, the most important part about beginning any 
new regimen. You want to know if it's achieving what you want it to achieve. Thank you for that. Again, again insightful. Uh, I like how that goes also back to what Doc Oye was saying. Guys, think. It's about mental, emotional, not just for the sake of nourishing your bodies. It is about to nourish you as a whole person. Thank you for that. I have another question here from Marion Manigbas. Marion Manigbas, despite many of us wanting to turn back to whole foods and more vegetables and fruits, COVID-19 has made access to these more difficult. Everyone's been saying, yeah, our experts have been saying that. So what can we do to make sure that we're still getting the vital nutrients needed by our bodies? in order to continue to improve our health. Dr. Oyi, I think this one's for you. Uh, sorry, what was the question? I was busy answering. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Actually, most of the experts have been typing in the Q&A box. Thank you for those answers. This one's from Marion. Uh, again, access to fruits and vegetables are hard. It's very hard now because of COVID. So what can we do to make sure we're still getting the vital nutrients if it's not readily accessible? Well, um, there are vegetables that you can actually stock, like the, the hard ones that can last for, for weeks. And or at the same time, if you have limited access, then you might as well prepare uh, foods that will provide you a very nutrient-dense uh, foods, like what uh, Dr. Doc Bok uh, was mentioning a while ago, like uh, consuming smoothies. You know? Or best, really, is you start planting. Like uh, if you have a little piece of garden there, like there's many herbs and botanicals are easy to, to grow. And you can easily uh, pick them and add them to your soup. Just uh, uh, or some of the um, uh, so this this herbs and botanicals you can add them as a garnish. You can add, you can eat them as well as raw, as mentioned by Doctor Lapuma. So if you have uh, and you're able to start planting, that's that's the best way really. Or just make sure that vegetables. There are vegetables that can be stored only uh, for three days to five days. That there are vegetables that can be stocked uh, longer. And nowadays. There's a lot of online um, access to, um, to harvest supplies. No? So that's how you can really uh, gain access to different um, vegetables because also our um, suppliers are having difficulty transporting their vegetables. But if you want really free access, then start, mm -hmm. your, start your own herb garden, start your own uh, vegetable garden. Um, that's the first thing I did when this pandemic uh, started. started. So, uh, it, it's easy. I mean, we are a tropical country. We have a lot of soil around us. We just really have to, um, uh, to move and to uh, really um, use um, what was given to us. You know? So just like what Dr. Lapuma said, let's not be limited by, by what we cannot eat, but what we can start with. You know? So we are all stuck in our, uh, in our, in our house. You know? So self-care, if you really want to be healthy, you need to start cooking. You know? So mm -hmm. self-care is the art of all healthcare, you know, um, yes. as according to my mentor in uh, mind-body medicine. You know, it begins with you. Do not outsource your health um, to the food industry. You know? So it begins, uh, in Tagalog, I call it KKK, you know? Kusina ang kalinga ng kalusugan. So it begins Ooh. in your kitchen. So your health does not begin in the doctor's clinic. That's where your diseases are treated. But your health begins at your home. Thank you for that, Doc Oi. And in fact, wait, to, Mar to Marion's question, I think Bernice has something to say about this. Bernice, just in case everyone's having a hard time accessing their fruits and veggies. Yeah, so actually that's a common problem for everyone nowadays, because especially for those who are so used to having their regular um, supply of vegetables. Uh, uh, it's good. I think that's also where Sakaya Raw Actives comes in, because it's able to at least um, provide you with an uh, more accessible um, full um, powdered whole food um, options that you yeah. can use. I mean, ideally, of course, you use the whole foods, uh, but in case uh, you have just a few, you can always augment by uh, boosting your nutrition day to day with the Sekairo Active. So you can, I've already heard of very um, creative ways of how people have incorporated, for example, our protein powders in their breakfast. Um, and then, um, as for me, my own personal um, pref uh, favorite of the line is actually the daily greens, because I'm I'm someone who really needs to boost her green and in, greens intake every, every day. day. <laughs> um, so aside from having uh, the salads or the smoothies, I sometimes add it in um, as well, and I've tried adding it to soups as well. So that's something uh, that you can also look at. So there's a lot of ways to be creative. I think. As mentioned, you know, um, by our speakers, you have to make it sustainable, you have to make it enjoyable, so that it's something that you can do for the long term, and make it something that's 
uh, you empower yourself to be able to make uh, these decisions for yourself every day. And last but not least, Ms. Bernice, where again can we get Sekaya Raw Actives, please? Okay, so Sekaya Raw Actives is available in all real food um, retail uh, accounts in BGC as well as in um, Alabang. Or you can always just message us through our IG or Facebook, Sekaya at Sekaya PH. Or you can also Viber or text us, uh, 0917-5-Sekaya. And finally, we're also available in Zalora, Shopee, and Lazada under the Essential Store, or you can look for the um, Sign of Eight flagship store in Lazada. So there's actually a lot of ways that you can um, get in touch with us. Check out the hashtags that you can see in your screens, everybody. Please do post your learnings uh, and, and sharings from today's discussion. Hashtag Sakaya PH, Raw Actives, and Prescribing Nature. Tag us as well, at Sakaya PH on Facebook and Instagram for all of your online sharings. And with that, can we give a virtual round of applause, a warm, warm virtual round of applause to our panelists today, from Ms. Bernice Gonzalez, again, for the queries about Sakaya Raw Actives, to our medical experts, Dr. John Lapuma. Thank you for joining us here in the Philippines, all the way thank from you. California. Dr. Oyi Balburias, thank you as well. Always a pleasure to see you, Dr. Oyi. And yeah. to Tanya, Doc Bok. JP and Bea, thank you as well for being generous with your personal journeys when it comes to your health, for sharing real stories and experiences that are very much relatable to everybody gathered here today. Again, not one size fits all. We are all in a personal health journey. So choose for yourself. Thank you as well to all of you, please, for joining the Sakaya Prescribing Nature series, Transforming Your Life with Food. And we hope that all of you will be more discerning about the choices you make the next time you're doing a grocery run, the next time you're cooking. Hey, all of our panelists said, go back to the kitchen, everybody. So please, when uh -huh. it comes to your cooking, go for it. Be more adventurous and eat at home. And I know I will be doing exactly that too. Don't forget to share your favorite Sakaya moments. You heard the hashtags, Sakaya PH, Raw Actives, and Prescribing Nature. Tag again, Sakaya PH on Facebook and Instagram. Remember, Sakaya Raw Actives is conveniently available online. Learn more about Sakaya Raw Actives by checking out at Sakaya PH on Facebook and Instagram. They also have their website, www.sakaya.com.ph. Again, my name is Isa Liton saying thank you very, very much, everybody, for joining us. Have a great Wednesday ahead. Stay healthy, happy, and safe. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hyperurbanization is here. More than half of the population now live in cities. It has broken our link to nature that is integral to us, putting our bodies in a state of deficiency. Experts call it nature deficit disorder, a growing health concern among people living in the city. In response, people tend to consume any natural product to make up for this deficiency, unaware that it might even be harmful to them. Sakaya. The brand that restores your link to nature. Sakaya harnesses the healing benefits of nature. Validated by the exacting standards of science. In merging the best of nature and science, Sakaya creates the ideal solutions that bring nature back into our lives. Prescribing nature. Sakaya.